Uh, it goes to the right. It, uh, and the biggest thing was the pay raise because that's, that that gives uh, you know a lot of uh, support for the troops, basically. Well, we we seem to be reli reliving past history and, and slavery. Uh, we we're reliving the Nazi era. We're uh, there were re we seem to be reliving slavery. 155 years after slavery ended, non-whites are demanding the names of historic monuments be changed, reparations made, statues torn down. Portland, Oregon is still an infected abscess. Your thoughts on BLM, whiteness, white guilt, white privilege? First of all, BLM on their website claims they are a Marxist-trained organization. And they have plenty of money, George Soros money, millions and millions of dollars. That's why they're still demonstrating. These are paid actors. These are paid activists who would demonstrate for 90 to 100 days. These are evil people, and they're paid. They've always been paid, and they bust all over the place. I watched a video the other day from uh, a, a truck stop in South Florida where there were five buses full of these Antifa people going down to South Florida. And this guy just videoed them coming off the bus. They're all dressed in black. They go into the restaurant and they come back out. But mm. slavery has been around since the birth of man. And sure. it's, still, it's still in existence all over the world, especially Africa. Mm. So why don't they go over there and, get, and, and stop it over there? They can't. And mm. it's all about... Uh, and that this white guilt and this privilege, it's a, it's a false narrative. It means nothing, but it's being taught by these leftist professors in college and in the schools. Mm. My daughter now is going to be teaching homeschooling her kids simply because of and her daughter goes to Catholic school because mm. they have to they have to either teach these kids this stuff. And I said, you're not going to teach them that. You're going to use your own thing and just going to find a way to teach these kids. It's really they are basically indoctrinating all kids and that's why you see these crazy college kids and mm. it's mostly females who do this sure. and they yeah. scream and yell and, and they're they're, uh, they're convinced that that they have white guilt and they don't even know what it is <laughs> well <laughs> what uh, let's talk about the police movement the def i mean defunding the police movement would you be a cop today or is the answer found in the question answer is found in the question, but as a side note, my son-in-law is a New York State trooper, mm. and he's, he is retiring within less than a month, which is good. But, uh, as you know, anecdotally, he was, he had to go to upstate New York, he went to, there's a city right next to Albany called Troy, he had to go to a couple of riots there, and it was the same thing, defund the police, F the police, F the police. And he had to stand in a line, and these people were, you know, come right up to him and scream and yell in his face, and he had to do nothing. And um, he put his papers in finally. He's only 47, but he can retire, which is good. That's some, yeah. So he, and he he was off. He had so much vacation time. He took off for the whole month of August. Goes back to work. He said he told tells me and my daughter. He's, Don't worry, I'll be sitting at a desk. His first day back. Where do they send him? To a bunch of riots in Saratoga. <laughs> oh, oh man. So, so I'm glad he's getting out. And he said when he went to the retirement office. Right after he went, which when I was up there, they shut down the office. And same thing in New York City. There's so many cops wanting to retire. New York City had to shut the, the office down for almost a month. They wouldn't That's... accept retirement. Sure. I the mean, why? Just... Yeah. yeah. Why would you want to go into an area like that where uh, people are acting that way against you? And, you know, like what happened just the other day in L.A., too. Uh... It's horrible. And it's, and it's absolutely horrible. And, and whenever... Now, last year, two years ago, or no, it was last year, with my son, I think, in Ithaca, New York, we were, there was a, like a block party somewhere. I'm walking around, and I see this guy my age with BLM on his tech, his arm, and I tell my son, I said, I'm getting out of here. We have to kill this guy. Because he doesn't, he doesn't even know what he's doing, because I said, they murder police. I told yeah. my son's kind of liberal. I said, so you, so you understand they murder police, and your brother in law is a cop? Yeah. And he didn't say yeah. anything. So. But it's horrible. You're right. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I just was uh, watching the tennis the other day, and uh, this the girl who won the U.S. Open, uh, Naomi Ozaki. She's got a boyfriend. He's a rapper, and he's got defund the police on a black T-shirt. And they took a picture together, and he's giving the bird, he's giving the finger to uh, the camera. And this is all over social media. I mean, I, I think it's it's terrible, and uh, it's just you know he's just attaching herself to her her fame and all. Terrible. 
they all, they all want attention and, and they all want uh, the 10 seconds of fame, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. Well, look, gun sales are way up now, but international terrorism seems to be down. However, domestic terrorism by the left, of course, by the left is way up. Why are there more gun sales than ever before? And do you think they will go up even more if Biden is elected president or if Trump is elected? What about your thoughts? Well, I just, I was, interestingly enough, I went to a gun show a couple of weeks ago down here. I hadn't had a gun show for months. <clears throat> it was so crowded when I went there on Saturday, I left because I couldn't get in. Mm. Um, so I went on Sunday and I, I, I bought a shotgun and something like that. And I actually, I told my brother, who you know, Mm-hmm. Um, that I was going to buy him a shotgun for his birthday, and I gave it to him, and he's happy as hell. So <laughs> it, it, it's not going to – it's a long story. That's no story. But basically, it's not going to stop. Uh, I have a friend of mine who's like a handyman, comes to my house. He bought a gun, has a permit. It's taken him four months in Florida to get this gun. He still, has, still doesn't have it. This is unheard of. Oh. But he, he bought it in a strange way. The, 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 the store bought it for him and had to order it. So I don't know. Anyway, it's not going to stop. I couldn't get half the ammo I wanted when I went to the gun show. And the ammo was more than double the price it was in uh, May. So what's going to take a while to catch up because they will. And I talked to one of the guys who makes a special kind of ammo from uh, I have a couple of pistols. And he said he can't even find what's called the primer, which is which ignites the bullet. They can't even find it. Hmm. So um, they're being sold out all over the place. And. Uh, if, if Biden gets, and I think what's also happening is these weather anomalies, and they're not really anomalies. Why is okay. all the weather going to going to Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas? Because that's where all the food packing is. I think there's going to be a, a run on food, a run on this, uh, and it's it's it's. I mean, weather manipulation has been going on since the 1900s. I mean, since the early ni- late 1900s. So wait a minute, I don't understand that. How do you how do you manipulate the weather? They manipulate it with uh, microwaves, and they steer hurricanes. They can steer it like the one Hurricane Sally was came up the coast, the west coast of Florida. Okay. But it all of a sudden veered out towards um, New Orleans. And in that area, if you remember, they shut down a couple of meatpacking plants and canneries and all that kind of stuff, and they flooded them out. And all of the – and I was watching something on uh, – uh, YouTube the other day, where this guy was saying, fires in the West, there's all sorts of ap- apocalyptic stuff going on, whether you would want to name it that or not, but it could be temporary, but the weather is very weird. And yeah. I've never, and there was, this is the, there's something like 46 storms in the Atlantic this season, which is unreal. Yeah. And my, I haven't, I haven't seen it, we have a lot of rain, but it seems to be, I don't, I don't really, I'm not a weatherman, but my neighbor is a big uh, proponent of this. It's been steering the weather and the microwaves with the 5G and all this stuff. So I'm not really sure, but it seems to be the same places seem to be getting hit at this all, uh, right one after the other. And they happens to be where they produce food or pack food. That's very interesting. Yeah, it's very, I, I hadn't even yeah. thought of that. Then there's, then there's Canada. Now, Canada doesn't seem to have too many uh, weather problems. Uh, there's nothing going on out there. I mean, no. up there. No, uh, because the prime, the prime minister just wants to put on his ballet shoes, that's all. <laughs> and the funny thing <laughs> is about that prime minister, he's a boxer, you know, and a pretty good one. Oh, so, really? Yeah, he's a boxer. What a good, Isn't that what funny? A conundrum. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is a conundrum. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, let's talk about health care. You're in the, involved in that and the price of prescription drugs. Uh, Trump just came out to say that he wants to uh, he signed an order to lower the price of uh, prescription drugs, and he wants and he also said at the very beginning in 2016 he wanted to get the price of health care way way down. Do you think these issues are of importance to the Republican Party? Because ever since John McCain came back from the dead before he died to vote yes on Obamacare and stymie Trump, everybody's health care is costing more. Your thoughts? Yes, I totally agree with that. McCain was uh, being evil in his last days on Earth. But unfortunately, I think <clears throat> Trump is trying to get, which is a good thing, most of our 
drug making back to this country rather than China. Right. Um, and a lot, right. and a lot of these corporations, you wouldn't believe. I mean, you sure you know all these corporations that sold out and made money by, by giving their their uh, products and their machinery to, to China because it was cheap, and China mm-hmm. would buy everything. But I think it's going to come down. I hope. But the problem is the industry is independent. He can make an order, but he cannot actually require them unless they put on some kind of regulation that says no drug that does this can cost more than this. And what sure. costs money for a drug is R&D. It takes 10 years for the FDA to approve a drug, which is absurd. Right. And, and in Europe, in Europe, it's a lot quicker. Mm. And sure. it is just, it, the bigger their agency the more bureaucrats and the more regulations. So that's, yeah. he's got to somehow cut that. He was supposed to cut the, he, I mean, the government is so big, he's, it, it's hard to cut bureaucrats because they're, they're lifelong residents. You know what I mean? Mm, sure. There are two million federal employees. And it's just yeah. crazy. So they're all, they're I, think all over. Down, I think it will take time. Okay, because I know he wanted, he was trying to do that, and he was doing it, but uh, then he didn't get that vote, that uh, key, key vote back in 2016. Um, I think if, if, I think if we get the House, which we might, um, that will happen. Trump is, I, was, I watched a video of Trump on Netflix about his life, and he was really into finances when he was starting his business. He was local, and he really knew finance. He knew economics. Mm. So he knows economics, and he's a businessman. And if anybody can do it, he can do it, because the rest of them will just go along with what their advisors say. Exactly. One of those guys. Well, listen, uh, Robert, unfortunately, we've come to the end of the time. We only have a few seconds left. Um, I would like to thank Robert Spence for being my guest today uh, on this The Case for Trump. This is Richard Bont, host of Commercial New York's on Society Bites Radio. Thank you, Robert Spence. So I'd like to thank our guests for being on Curmudgeonly Yours today. And please, if you like what you heard, send me an email to richard at richardbont.com. And if you didn't, please keep your comments to yourself. Remember, this is Richard Bont and Curmudgeonly Yours on Society Bites Radio, where everything is what it seems, nothing is what it seems, and what is not said is often of most interest.